that's fine. Thank you. And we can hand it over to the panel. We can say good night, and we're going to end it with him doing a song. And once the song is done, we'll be off the air. And once it's off the air, you can still like keep playing because then you could finish the song, and whatever's not on the air, I can post it on YouTube to have the full song. All right, cool. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Don't worry, you ain't got it all. broken teeth, a little beer in my glass. I had a hundred plans, but they only seemed to pass away. If I could break out without breaking down, I've got snake eyes, a sedated state of mind. I've tripped and fallen one too many times. If I could break out without breaking down I feel so worried, can't seem to come around Can't imagine my road without being run down I could break out without breaking down. Turn off my brain All of my thoughts feel deranged If I could break out Without breaking down All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. I, my name is David King. I'm Fred Sobrin. And welcome to Keeping It Real. I know you guys were expecting to see me, Mr. Uh, Ray Charles, over here to start the show. <laughs> but you guys have just heard uh, our guest tonight, Dan. First of all, Dan, great oh, job so. with playing the guitar. Because I got to tell you right now, I think I would have caught my finger in <laughs> the middle of the guitar doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great job. Uh, well, good to be here. And welcome to the show. Freddie, I want to ask this week, what's with the shirt again? I don't know that! <laughs> Last week, we talked about the shirt, but we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that shirt thing. <laughs> uh, Dan, I mean, that was sweet, man. Thanks. How do you do that? How do you play the guitar, uh, for one, without getting your fingers caught? And number two, I mean, is it, is it hard to play the guitar? Yeah. Well, it takes a lot of practice. Uh, I mean, actually, just before... Uh, I got here today, I, like, I pinched a nerve really bad in my finger, and I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. But I was just like, you know, I'll take the pain. This is the Keeping It Real show. Yes. Damn it. <laughs> well, well, that was real. <laughs> but I mean. Uh, How long did know. it take you to start playing? Uh, I've been playing for about 17 years now, um, and wow. I've been trying to write my own songs for a long time. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you just never stop. Like, you just keep thinking about, like, what makes a good song idea, and you just keep experimenting and trying to come up with riffs, and, you know, it, it, you, eventually you'll get there. It's, it, it takes a lot of work. But now, you know, now, like, when you're using the guitar, is it hard to, like, know from, how you say it, from what sound from the other? Like, with the, the strings, they have different You mean notes. finding different notes? Yeah. Um, you know, 
it, maybe at first, uh, like you, like I, I, I play songs that are rooted in blues, so I use the pentatonic scales. And when you're learning those, they'll show you patterns, like how how they're shaped. And so, you know, you you practice them for a while, and after a while, your fingers kind of get. They, it's almost like they know what to do a little bit. Right. So, uh, yeah. You're, Comes second nature kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. And uh, I also heard, well, besides music, you also do comedy. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, tomorrow night, I'm going to be at Leisha's Bakery in Bridgeport, Connecticut. It's right down on uh, Lafayette Square, 7 Lafayette Square. Nice. I'm going to be opening up the show tomorrow around 6 o'clock. Maybe I'll do about an hour of music. And then after that, uh, the lady who runs it, Lynn Mosher, is going to come up and start the show, and Jackson's going to be there, and a bunch of other comedians uh, local to Bridgeport. Wow. Are you, is so Robert you, Plant going to show up? Uh, I, no, I don't think so. Not this time. <laughs> maybe, n maybe next month. <laughs> it says he looks like Robert Plant. But. <laughs> so, I mean, you've been having a busy schedule lately. I mean, you, you were in New Haven. Uh, yeah. You're here on our show tonight. That's right. Uh, and then tomorrow, you're, you're going over there. I mean, you, Do you ever get a day off? <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, well, yeah, kind of. I mean, when you're, <laughs> when you're doing stand-up comedy, like, you kind of have to do it as much as possible because, you know, you, it, you, it doesn't work unless, uh, you know, you're doing it in front of people. And, you, and sometimes you can't just sit at home and write jokes because you don't know if they're funny until you test them in front of people. Yeah. So you kind of want to get as much stage time as possible. So, so I, I, I mean, yeah, I get a day off, but I try not to. <laughs> yeah. So do you go all around the state of Connecticut or just... Um, I go a lot, of, uh, I'll go up to Naugatuck, there's a mic that I do in, uh, in Naugatuck called Slant Days, there's, um, I'll go up to uh, Newington, Newington for the On Fire Grill, I go to Branford for E. McHenry's, there are lots of open mics that do, co that, you know, help comedians do, practice their stuff, and so I try to make the rounds. Nice. I mean, uh, you know, when, now did you grow up here? Bridgeport or in Connecticut? I grew up in West Haven, but okay. I do a lot of the most of the majority of the shows I do are probably in in Bridgeport because I do because Lynn Mosher does uh, Leisha's Bakery uh, the first Thursday of every month, and then she does another show over at Amici Me and also in Bridgeport, and I believe that's the third Thursday of every month. So the, like the, she, I do mostly her shows. Uh. Nice. But I also, you know, I have done the casinos too. Like a couple times, I've been. Uh, at comics when it was in Foxwoods, and I and I've recently got to do Mohegan Sun, so that was pretty. Nice. Cool. How was that? Uh, it, was, it was pretty fun. It was a good audience. Like they were, the casino crowd. Um, they're they're ready to hear com uh, comedy. Like sometimes you'll go to a bar and there and people are there to just drink or watch TV. And they don't <laughs> care what's going on. Yeah. So you're just talking over people, but um, but yeah, when when it's a club and they're actually there to see comedy specifically. But usually the, it, it's a good experience. Nice. I mean, so from what it sounds like, I'd say uh, you enjoy doing this, but how long have you been doing this? Comedy or music? Uh, um, both. Uh, music I've been playing for 17 years. Maybe I've been performing in front of people for about 15. Comedy, This is. I'm in my third year. I've probably been doing it for maybe two and a half years. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, they'll definitely, if you're, if you're worried about me being inexperienced at the show tomorrow, there's going to be a, a bunch of headliners uh, that are going to be... Uh, I, mean, I, I don't doubt that. I mean, you opened the show up today. I mean, I don't know. I mean... I mean, folks, I've seen his comedy. He's pretty funny. Oh, thank in, you, sir. In, in, in my so, respect. <laughs> you know, speaking of comedy, what, you know, for you, uh, what, what comedy do you, like, what do you kind of focus on in your comedy? Um, you mean like the subject matter? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Basically, um, my stage per persona for comedy is kind of being like a moronic man-child type character, like just a, a, a character who's not really that, he's just not, he ha just hasn't figured life out at all. And he'll talk about how uh, he thinks he's got everything uh, understood, but everything he says reveals that he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I guess that's the best way I can explain it or describe it. So what's your favorite comic? Oh man, there are so many. Um, I really like Patrice O'Neill. I like Pat Oswalt. Um, uh, who else? Louis is a pretty common one that you'll hear. I kind of like him. Um, I've been really getting into Emo Phillips a lot lately because he's so he's so quiet and weird. And um, I feel like he, his character is similar to mine in that my character is like 
He's just a quiet weirdo who just <laughs> doesn't get quiet any... Quiet weirdo. Yeah. Sounds like Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me, yeah, every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's just not oh, he said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm a quiet weirdo. Uh, I, I respect. <laughs> yeah. You know, we always say, you know, nothing wrong to be different. You got to be different. Nope. Uh, that's what makes you unique. I mean, I'm... I'm, I like to think I'm different. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm one of a kind. Hey, one you're, of a kind. you're an artist. I mean, like sometimes you have to be like in order to be a good artist, you kind of have to be on the sidelines a little bit, like studying what's going on in, in life, and like that, like a lot. That's the way how you pay attention to details. That's how you, you, you know. Well, definitely. It. So I mean, folks, also Dan does animation. Oh yeah. Um, and I've seen some of his work. It looks like Beavis and Butthead, but it's better. <laughs> and folks, we've got a breakthrough. Opinion. Freddie's actually talking today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're trying to talk and trying to we'll conversate go, we'll with go you ahead. guys. But, yes. but he does animation. I've seen it. It's pretty pretty good work. Oh, thank you very so much. So how long have you been doing that on top of the music and then the comedy oh. and everything else? I'm saying, right? He, I tell you, he's very busy. He, <laughs> <laughs> animation, I've been doing maybe since I was 12 years old, so... Maybe 25 years. Uh, wow. Like, I, I started off on a really simple program called Disney Animation Studio, and nice. the, the lines were all pixelated because it was such an old program, but now I use Flash, and I put my cartoons on YouTube. So if you want to see my cartoons, you can see them on, uh, if you search Ghosty Films on YouTube, a bunch of them will probably come up. And also... Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I post like links to my cartoons there all the time. So I'm at Ghosty Films on Twitter. Um, so what's your newest creation? Newest, my newest animated creation. Yeah. Um, hmm, let's see. Um, the one, I, well, there's one I'm working on right now. Um, it, it's it was actually written by a, another comedian named Pat Oates, and uh, um, he's a pretty well-known comedian in the area. And he wrote out a script with a bunch of crazy characters. And uh, you know, I'm I'm working on that. I, um, it, it's it's been taking up a lot of my time, but uh, that's I'm hoping that'll be out. I'll be able to put that up in a couple of months. But it takes a long time a long time to finish. Very it. cool. Yeah. Uh, I I can imagine. I mean, so you know, growing up, what I guess who's your guys that you kind of and got you know were inspired by when you said earlier, like I'm an artist. Like I I was inspired by rappers such as uh, Biggie and Tupac, Core and. Uh, Recently, even like some of the my favorite uh, local town rapper uh, is a guy named Senages, uh and he's actually uh, my music kind of like producer who's helped me with my music. But his work is awesome, and I enjoy his music, and I enjoy his work. Uh, so you know, who is some of the guys where that you you know grew up kind of like you know like you said studied and tried to learn from to get better at your profession, rather that was music or comedy or even animation. Hmm. Um, well, a as far as music goes, like, uh, I was really into the Beatles, and, uh, when I first started out, I okay, tried that's respect. Now, I've never heard nobody, folks, actually say that out of all the other guys, the Beatles were one of them. You know, you hear yeah. Michael Jackson, you hear Tim, these are the Beatles. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Led well, Beatles, Led Zeppelin, I, I, I feel like those are my biggest musical influences. Um, I guess as far as animation goes, I used to like to watch Bugs Bunny a lot, and, uh, Sweet. Um, I just like that that style. Like it's just a very mo like the the movements are so exaggerated. You like the Tex a Tex Avery type of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, Looney Tunes was awesome. Yeah, it was. I love still Looney is. Tunes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At least for us. Yeah. Yeah. You know we're getting old. <laughs> but uh, I mean, and, and how old that is? Yeah. Right. And what about comedians? Or, or you didn't have like a? You know, I don't really. I didn't really have a. A mentor. I mean, I guess Pat Oates would be my unofficial mentor in terms of comedy. He's like I said before, he's a local guy, and you know, he he runs a lot of the mics that that you'll uh, see here in mostly Southern Connecticut, and uh, you know, he'll run them, and then he'll sometimes pull you aside and give you advice and stuff like that. So, you know, I feel like when you're an artist uh, or when you're when you're when you're just doing artistic things, no matter who it is, sometimes. You just have to listen to the people who've been doing it before you, and you don't always have to agree with everything they say, but you should yeah. listen and think listen about. Listen to they your say. elders. Yeah, well, they tell you. I mean, well, like like Dan was just saying, like it's not even about elders. It's like if they've been doing it uh, longer than you, and they have more experience in the game, or how do you? It's an artist to an artist. 
uh, it doesn't matter what type of music you do, it's still the same thing. It's like, you know, uh, percentages who work for me. He, he's been there a lot longer than me. Uh, yes, I'm not probably as good as him. Uh, not to shoot myself down, but I mean, but that's how I'm getting better. I'm learning from him and understanding this and that when it comes to different pitches, different sounds, different everything. Yeah, and that's how you get better. That you, you gotta crawl before you walk, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. pretty much true for everything that I've ever tried. I just think at it until I'm good at it. Yeah. Right. I didn't think that's anything in life. You know, yeah. you gotta crawl before you walk. Anything you do. I mean, Freddie, you know, you like to write. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, you, I haven't found a You like Shakespeare yet. and the Edgar Allan Poe and all that yeah. stuff. But I mean, you know, it, I mean, I don't know, Freddie. You have a mentor when it comes to that. I had a mentor. He recently passed away, like five years ago. Oh. But I haven't found one. But I'm I'm on the lookout for one. Call in if you want to be my <laughs> <his> mentor. <laughs> <laughs> this is live but, TV. Anything can happen. You know what? But speaking of live TV, speaking of calling in on live TV, this you is can call in on the number. Yes, number this down is below. a live call and show, and you can call. You can ask Dan a question, me a question, or David a question. Yes. Now, Freddie, I want to ask you a question. What's that? The shirt. What's with the purple shirt? I don't know, man. <laughs> I tried finding the striped shirt. Couldn't find it. <laughs> What's wrong with the purple shirt? <laughs> you know, this is, I mean, is this the weekly shirt? Is, it, is this the, this is going to be his cute, you know, when we do an animation, he's getting the purple shirt. <laughs> <laughs> purple shirt, Joker makeup. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not nah, just the purple shirt. Just the purple shirt? <laughs> just the purple shirt, that's your character. You, beard or no beard? You know, you watch cartoons and they always got the same outfit on every day in yeah. the episode. Your, your shirt is always the purple <laughs> shirt. <laughs> Thank you. I'll have to have a, a funny catchphrase like zoinks or uh, <laughs> here's my <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, all right, there you go. So here are you. Here's this thing. But, you, you know, but I think for anything, I love, first of all, I love comedy myself. I grew up, I'm a fan of uh, Kevin Hart. I like Cat Williams. I thought Jim Carrey was cool. Um, what's his name? Uh, help me out, friend. The guy at the puppets. Yeah, oh, Jeff Dunham? Jeff, Jeff Dunham? Yes, I think what he does with the ventriloquism is, is very cool. Yeah, I think that's... Actually, it's very amazing because I was like, I can never do that. It's supposed to be two people on stage when it's actually one person. <laughs> well, obviously, that's the gig. That's hard to do. Yeah. yeah. Just to throw your voice in the puppet and make it be seem believable that it's the puppet talking to you and not you. But. And there's got to be like a conflict between you and the puppet, so it's like you're thinking for two different people, I guess. Right. But just like you said earlier at the top of the show with the music, with your fingers, with the guitar there, you know, it becomes second nature once you've do it, done it so long. Yeah. I think that's on all three of us sitting here tonight can agree on that what we do, it becomes second nature once we do it long enough. Yeah. <clears throat> Freddie, you're, you're getting it with the TV. You're getting it I'm today. I'm getting it with the TV. <laughs> today. <laughs> this is where I got it with school. <laughs> but, you know, well, you're getting it. But that's the thing, though. Once you do something long enough and you get more and more and more comfortable with it, you don't even worry about doing it. You just get up there, you just do it, and, and that's it. Now, you know, Dan, you said that you do comedy, of course, in front of a live audience. You ever get nervous? You ever get worried that you're going to get booed? Or you get <laughs> do you ever go on stage and get totally silent? Yeah, like, you ever... Oh, I, I've been on stage plenty of times with total silence. It's just part of the part of doing it like you're never going to be good just walking up there the first time like you're you're going to be bad for a long time before you start getting laughs and so you kind of have to you just kind of have to accept it like you, you know you're going to have you're going to fall on your face a couple of times um but uh you know when i i started doing comedy i'd already been doing music for a long time so i kind of uh you know i dealt with a lot of the, the mistakes and the failures through music so by the time comedy came along it seemed like it was a lot easier because i i was just talking i didn't have to, my hands were doing nothing i was only doing half it seemed like i was only doing half of what i was doing before and i was doing it for a much shorter period of time so um yeah i was nervous but it was a, a lot e much easier for me to handle it i guess because i had been doing music for so long so so yeah. what, what came easier for you the music the comedy or the or the uh, artwork um, well, the artwork, um, you know, I guess it came easiest because I never, I, you know, for the longest time I did it without, um, you know, without being in front of other people and having them judge me. And sometimes, uh, 
when you do, when you do animation, like you finish your animation and you put it online, and it's almost like you're, other people are watching it and you're not there. But when you're doing music on stage or when you're doing comedy on stage, people are looking at you and they're <laughs> judging you in real time, and they maybe they'll yell something at you, or or you know something like that. So definitely, animation is much easier emotionally, I guess. Do you ever go back on YouTube and watch your old videos and be like, well, I could fix this and I could oh, fix yeah. this? Yeah, I, I think anybody as an artist or a writer, yeah. uh, we always are hypocritical to ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're, we're always like, that, that one little piece. And somebody will say, no, it's fine. They'll be like, no, but I heard that one. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> or that one little drawing right there. And you're looking at the first, like, right there. You'll be like, where? Right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Right, they don't see it because right where, the right thing is, there, the right thing, here, but the right thing is, now. are you having a panic attack? <laughs> <laughs> or not having a panic attack? <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, as the artist, you always see what everybody doesn't see yeah. in your work, or hear what nobody else hears in in your work. You know, well, but, because I think as the artist, you know everything. You don't know, you know everything, but well, you're so not everything. But you're you know into how every little word or every little thing you want it to sound. But Perfect. you know how you want it to go. Right. Mm. And it doesn't go the way you want. It's like, okay, let's go back and fix it. Exactly. I mean, so, you know, it, it, yeah, you do get that kind of emotion with it. But, you know, it, you work at it. Have you ever done a set where you go on stage, you have your set, and you're like, wow, I feel really good? Oh, yeah. I've had... Both. I felt really good. I felt horrible. Uh, I heard everything you. in between. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've done songs where I love, and then I've done songs like, yeah. I've, I've had uh, pieces of writing where it's like, okay. Then I throw have, it in the garbage. Then I've uh, I had songs that go half and half, where the first verse came out great, the second verse needs fixing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or the second verse came out great, but the first verse needs fixing. But you know, as long as at the end of the day it comes out great, that's what I always care about. Have you ever thought about, like, you know, with your music, have you ever thought about making, I don't know, your own demo tape, your own CD? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm actually trying to, uh, like, the thing about that is that I want to have multiple instruments on my recording. So, uh, like, one of the things I've been doing to work toward that is that I bought a, uh, a drum set from India, and they call them tabla drums. And uh, basically there's, like, a huge metal bass drum on one side and then there's like a thin wooden drum on the other side and you play them sitting on the floor and I want to get like some of that sound into the recording but I, I've i never been a drummer so I'm kind of learning that from scratch where I'm learning all the hand movements how to play the drum properly and like get fluid and efficient at it so that I can it's actually worth being on a recording so um, so I want to have some acoustic recordings with like multiple instruments where I have that drum included and and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that within the next couple of months. Nice. I mean, or you can start a band. Yeah. Uh, the thing about like starting a band sometimes is that other musicians they don't always uh, they don't they're not always as passionate as you are about sure. your thing. So sometimes it can be hard because people don't want to set time aside for somebody else's project a lot of the time. Have so. you ever been in a band? I've tried to start a few bands a couple of times, but you know, real life takes over and people move away or they. Yeah, you know, they, life happens. Yeah, That's life very happens. True. Sometimes it's just easier for me to have one instrument and play it and then sing along with my own instrument. So it's, it's the path of least resistance, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. But, uh, well, since you done a lot of talking today, Fred. Uh, <laughs> do you want to do any announcements? Yeah. I'm going to let you do that because I didn't oh, do the last one. Okay. 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 Well, let's see. <laughs> we want to remind everybody that you could watch this episode and other episodes on our YouTube channel at Keeping It Real with David King. Which is yours truly? Yes. Next. It's your part. We also have a Twitter page. Uh, we also have a Facebook page at Keeping It Real TV. With the, what is it, the at sign in front of it, is that it? That's the Twitter page, yes. Okay, okay, I'm making sure I got it right. You know? We also have an Instagram, which is K-I-R up close, and I don't know. And an email? Yeah, we have an email. See? With the, 
the keeping it real tv show at gmail.com you can email us anything you want to see on the show anything you want to ask anything we can include in this next week's episode as well as future episodes you can also email us yes and you can we'd talk. love to hear your feedback yeah we'd love to hear how you feel about me and Freddie always arguing every week <laughs> <laughs> it's playful arguing sorry 50 50 <laughs> <laughs> right. but you know uh but yeah that's pretty much so you know, in a couple mi- in a couple minutes, actually Dan's actually going to perform another this song, song for right. us. Should but we uh, that now or, or uh, happy about it. okay. All right, yeah. Don't forget to uh, come down to Leisha's Bakery tomorrow at seven Lafayette Square, Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'll be doing more music and comedy. All right, so now, folks, we're gonna hand it back over to Dan and uh, Dan let me know when you're ready give me the sun give me the I think I'm good you're good okay so we're gonna hand it over to Dan and take it away as the waning light glistens in the shards on your floor you've let a few things go now that a few of your doors have closed I couldn't seem to understand you, whoa, until you had, whoa, until you had a broken dream or two. It used to seem, it used to seem that your world was so clean, like you never ever heard the word no you made me feel like an angel was sent like an angel was sent up from below i couldn't seem to see you whoa until you had whoa until you had a broken dream or two now that a little light a little light has left from your eyes now that you've had a chance to try to try failure to try failure on for size i couldn't seem to speak to you whoa until you had whoa until you had a broken dream or two to cry the blues but your face your face was only fake in it now you can't seem to make a plan you can't seem to make a plan without somebody breaking it down i couldn't seem to speak to you whoa until you had whoa until you had a broken dream or two Thanks, Dan. And once again, you guys just heard Dan <laughs> play a, play that guitar like, like again, no other. Just, I, just I, I, can't, I can't possibly <laughs> do it. I mean, I, I told you I would be bad at it. I, I, I Might as well sound it. like a cat just choking. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be like it'd be like, real, real, real. <laughs> but uh, Dan, you were great. Too. Oh, thanks. I, that's great. I mean, you know, uh, if I get a chance, I uh, hope to stop by tomorrow. Yeah, uh, and, and check out you play some more music and of course you do some comedy tomorrow all right cool uh, freddie hopefully by tomorrow uh change your shirt yes i was gonna <laughs> say that is it gonna have a new shirt is it gonna be purple and black or purple and green but i know it's got purple in it but purple. i mean i could just borrow one of your button down shirts. but it's not purple but anyway yeah you know we're getting ready to go off so should i play us out or something or i think we're cut off the air uh <laughs> we are oh. <laughs>
I thought we wasn't yet. It's not even 7.30. Oh, well. That was probably the quickest episode we've ever had. Ah! <laughs> That is the quickest episode we've ever had. I don't think we've done another like. I thought we had.